Hey, what's going on everyone? So I wanted to uh, put together a quick set of video notes for the reading material this week. Um, this is going to be pretty short and sweet. I've got some uh, a supplemental video from a previous class that I'm going to include this week. So let's take a look at uh, some of the some of the notes from this material. So the first question is is what is a database? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and I think that that there's a pretty um, a diverse um, uh, level of uh, exposure to databases and uh, what databases really are in this class. Um, a database is a group of related data um, that can be flat files or objects or anything. Um, uh, it, it's, it's pretty diverse uh, these days. The the databases that we're going to be working with are going to be pretty plain and simple. It's going to be a, uh, basically a group of flat files. Um, think of it as a collection of Excel spreadsheets that are related to one another. Now, the um, the uh, one important aspect of a relational database is that those um, those files or those entities must have relationships uh, between each other, but between between the entities, some entities have relationships uh, to multiple entities, and or some is just some databases are just a uh, Vertical set of entities that uh, that have a sequential relationship um, between between all the entities, <clears throat> um, and a database must also be structured in a way that can be queried. Uh, queried means that uh, that you effectively ask the database a question. You you, you ask uh, for specific information out of that database, and uh, and you leave it up to the the database management system to provide you the the answer to that question or the uh, the results of that query. So one one very important detail about the database development is to determine the the data ownership and this is very very important especially for an organization that is going from um, older computer systems and you're really not going to see this too much more um, these days because uh, because most uh, most organizations especially the large ones uh, larger organizations have have already converted over to um, some type of uh, database data management system but uh, but effectively you need to make sure that um, that you you uh, as the database developer and everyone in the organization starting at the top down <clears throat> understands who owns what data and then and then that data is kind of uh, split up based on those uh, those ownerships and put into um, entities or to um, different uh, database sections based on those ownerships and uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little later on um, and this this gets into a service oriented architecture and this 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 is just one type of database design that uh, that that can be used this is just one that, uh, that the text um, focuses on but uh, but effectively you might have um, a uh, uh, human resources section or you have a research and development section or you have um, a management section or you have the um, database management section each one of those sections are going to have different um, bits of, of uh, information they're going to be more interested in or more um, or collections of data that are going to be uh, more interested in so that that is going to determine what data is going to be uh, primarily accessible to to each of those um, organizational uh, entities so so that database design will kind of reflect around that the database uh, th those that design um, or the the areas of interest so in other words it, it's going to be very important um, this is to eliminate a duplication of data so you don't want to have a um, a set of data that has employee names in the human resources section and then have a, another um, group of data or another um, table, another entity that contains the, a, another set of um, employee names, because because those it's really hard to keep uh, to keep those uh, those entities um, in sync and make sure that the data remains the same. So 
it's, it's better to, uh, to design a database that uh, removes the duplication of data and we'll, we'll get into this more when, when we get into normalization of our database. Um, and when we when we have a design like that that's uh, that has um, that has less duplication and uh, more of a, um, a more architecture design, it's uh, it's a lot easier for system modifications, and those are inevitable when uh, when organizations change, and they do as um, as the the requirements change of that for that organization, the uh, the system requirements are also going to change. So um, as those requirements uh, are modified. We also have to modify those databases to uh, to make sure that they they satisfy the needs of the of the system. So <clears throat> there are many many uh, database management systems out there. Oracle is, is one of the most common. We also have um, um, uh, SQL Server and so on and so forth. Um, but every database management system has to have some high level uh, number of functions that they offer. Um, of course, they have to provide the ability to create a structure for a database, um, ways to enter, modify, and delete data, and ways to retrieve that data. We talked about before the, um, the queries against the data that's already in that database. When, when we run a query, we, we ask, that, ask that question to the database to provide some response with, with uh, uh, information from that database. And now the data from that query can come from one entity or it can come from seven entities or uh, bits and pieces out of all those entities so and it just really depends on how how that uh, that query or that question is asked of the database <clears throat> and then of course we um, we we have to restrict the um, the accesses to specific information um, for instance as, as I mentioned before if you have um, Human resources is, is going to have information on um, uh, employee salaries and and uh, and so on and so forth, health benefits and and the, and the like, where um, the folks at research and development are not going to need that kind of information, so they're not going to have access to that uh, that type of data. Um, and then uh, and then there's the ability to share data, and what that means is that most databases have the ability for uh, Multiple people to, um, to 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 access the the same data simultaneously. Um, now that's not always the case. Um, now Microsoft Access was never really designed to have multiple people um, logging into the database at one time. It's really designed for one person to sit down and and uh, design a database to uh, to manage their their recipes or their album collection, if you have a set of vinyls anymore um, but uh, but most most databases have the ability um, or provide the ability for multiple users to log into this the, the same database at the same time so the text also mentions um, hardware architecture and we, and we talked about this briefly in, in a few of the um, the discussion posts this week um, a centralized uh, database was and and you rarely see this any longer but you had a uh, centralized database on a mainframe and then you had dummy terminals with the old monochrome screens that uh, that access the database um, from a distance and then that's that kind of uh, transitioned into a client server database where the the processing was kind of a split between the uh, the servers or the mainframe, and then the um, the, the PC that the that the user is sitting at. Um, <clears throat> and typically, what happens is that uh, the the servers hold the uh, hold the database. You have database servers. <clears throat> excuse me that to contain all that data the user will do a query to retrieve the information that they need as that information comes back um, it's it just comes back in a, um, in a uh, mass uh, uh, unformatted um, load of data that uh, that comes in and then it's up to the PC to format that into uh, into a um, into an architecture that, that is um, viewable by or more viewable by, by human human eyes um, and then there's distributed databases. Uh, you occasionally see this, but uh, but not not so much. Um, effectively, what what that is is you have a number of servers, and th this I've seen 
uh, distributed databases that span the globe. And you have um, servers at one location that, uh, again, if you, for instance, you have one location that has primarily human resources, then they're going to have most of the tables that they access um, at their location and still have links back to the other uh, the other entities that, that may be accessed by someone else and then in another city you'll have other servers that are specific uh, that contain the same database because they're all connected but uh, but those entities uh, might be more reflective of research and development and the like. So that's a distributed database. And then <clears throat> web services is really what we see these days. I mean, uh, uh, pretty much every, uh, every database um, has to have some kind of um, web interface to the uh, to, to access its data, um, and it it just um, and, and we we see that in just about everything <clears throat> everything that we we access online. All right, so this is uh, this is a, an image from from our text that uh, that has a um, a web based um, uh, access to a web server where you have the internet and then you have a, a web server uh, behind uh, behind that where folks actually access the web server and then the web server accesses the database server through a firewall and uh, that's just kind of another um, uh, measure of protection for the data within that database to make sure that uh, that that um, that no one is accessing that data that uh, doesn't have the right um, the right permissions to do so. Um, and this again, this is really what we see um, a lot these days with uh, with the database design. <clears throat> um, and uh, in 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 those in that web design, we have. Um, uh, accessing data remotely is becoming more and more critical with through uh, through VPN and uh, smartphone applications that uh, that access um, access uh, bank uh, account information. That's all uh, back end database. All kinds of information that when you're shopping online, that's all all database information is uh, is behind the scenes on that. Now. Before we get too far into this, let's make sure that we <clears throat> that we have a perspective on where we are and uh, and what we're what we're actually working on when we uh, when we're working on um, the the our homework or the um, the classroom discussions right now. There is a software development life cycle or a system development life cycle that uh, <clears throat> that different organizations will use when when they're developing software or developing databases or what have you um, and the text mentions this briefly I believe but um, uh, now we'll, we'll get into this a little more uh, a little later on but the the first phase is to analyze the problem and to determine um, how to solve that problem and then and then we go into the design phase and that's where we start putting together our um, entity relationship diagrams and start modeling our database um, or start start modeling what our database will eventually look like now it's important to understand that there's a difference between the modeling um, segments and then actually creating the database because right now we're just creating entities and uh, and to determine what uh, what entity what the entities are going to be what the relationship what the relationships are between those entities and what the attributes of each of those entities are going to be and then eventually we'll get into what the primary keys of those entities are going to be and what the foreign keys are going to be now we're not going to worry about that right now but any, at any rate, we are right here at the design phase, and uh, and we are just modeling. We're modeling um, the database design with um, with entities and the relationships between between those entities. Now I say that because there is a big big difference between an entity and a table. We are we are a long way from tables, so let's let's just stick with entities right now, and uh, we'll work from there. <clears throat> so. Um, as I said, uh, we're working on ent entities and their relationships between those, um, and entities are not tables. Now, one very important point that I need to make is that our entity names will be singular nouns. And now, I, I don't have that in, in, uh, in this slide, but 
um, I, I would prefer that those entity names uh, have the first letter capitalized and then the rest is going to be lowercase um, rather than all capitalized but, but we'll, we'll, we'll get through that a little later on and then relationships between those entities um, it's you you rarely see a one to one relationship that's uh, that's almost never seen um it's most often it's going to be one to many now there are some relationships that are going to be many to many um but uh, that's really you, you can't really do that when when you're when you start getting into that uh the database design when you start converting those models into um into a database and turning the entities into tables um so we'll, we'll work on that we'll we'll have to uh get into a normalization but anyway th those are the type of relationships that uh, that we'll have between those those entities um, so these uh, these models these models that we're going to be working on uh, again like I said they, they show each entity along with the attributes uh, contained in those entities and then the relationships between the entities so let's take a look real quick at um, at something that I've put together on um, on that Draw.io website that I have in the web bibliography, and uh, and I'll show you how to get there. So once again, this is uh, this is our um, our classroom, and if we go down to the course resources and go to web bibliography. Um, there are several links here, and uh, the, the first one here is uh, Draw.io's online mod modeling tool. Um, and there, there are a few others. We'll, we'll get into those a little later on, but let's let's go to Draw.io, <clears throat> and I'm going to go to my Google Drive and open an existing diagram, and I'll use this guy right here. So. This is a um, uh, an ERD, an inter entity relationship model of a very simple database. I've got uh, customer order, order line, and the product. And now, don't worry too much about these relationships yet. We'll get into that in a week or so, and how the relationships are designed. Um, but um, now, this does um, this does show that you remember we talked about the types of relationships being uh, many to one or many to many now now these are many to one because you see that uh, that this, this has a the crow's foot which shows many and then the straight line shows one so what that means is that one customer can place many orders and but one order can only have one customer <clears throat> and likewise um, uh, one order can be from multiple order lines and um, each uh, each product can be on uh, on multiple order lines so and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more deeply uh, later on um, but just kind of kind of take a look at that now this is uh, again this is uh, draw IO this is a great website for for doing a lot of different modeling um, flow charting which is really good when you're working on um, uh, when you're taking CMIS 102 which I teach and there is also the entity relationship now these uh, these are probably the ones that uh, that you guys will be using I, I kind of picked a, uh, a general block format for uh, for my ERD um, it's probably better that you use these entity relationships and the and the associated uh, relationships contained therein um, so take a look at that and uh, and hopefully that that'll help you guys out when uh, when you're creating that that ERD and um, I think that's all that I had let me take a look real quick yep okay that's it so uh, if you guys have any questions please let me know and um, I'll, I'll post this video and one supplemental that uh, that I've recorded from uh, a previous text and uh, you guys let me know if you have any questions